Okay, so now we're moving on to the sweets. Now, sweets are a little bit more challenging when you're thinking of a classic afternoon tea um, because there's quite a variety of sweets that exist. And so picking some that would be a classic uh, would be very challenging. But generally, when I think of an afternoon tea and the top tier of sweets, I think of a cookie, a tart, a cake, or some sort of a bar. Um, so today we're going to try two recipes uh, and then I will add those to some store-bought goods just to make sure that there is something edible on the sweets tier because I have never made these recipes before and so we're keeping our fingers crossed. We're going to start with a mini strawberry cheesecake uh, in a tart shell. Now the recipe does call for phyllo shells but I think that using tart shells with my knowledge of baking, which is very, very small, might be a good idea. Um, so we're going to use the tart shells. We might actually save the phyllo for the other recipe and see if we can do something with that. So I've got my tart shells ready. I'm going to pop them in the oven and then we will start on our mini strawberry cheesecake filling. Okay, here we go. The uh, recipe calls for fresh strawberries, uh, but it does say that other berries can be used. Strawberries really aren't in season right now, so I've grabbed some blueberries that I'm hoping uh, will be okay, um, and we'll make, uh, we'll put blueberries on top of our cheesecake filling. So it calls for whipped cream cheese, which is different than regular cream cheese, I found out. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to be putting in uh, whipped cream cheese, some sugar, um, and then some lemon zest, lemon juice, uh, and we're going to be putting all of that into our tart shells. Uh, let's see here, we need half a cup of whipped cream cheese. Now it does say that you can also use mascarpone cheese. Um, I looked at that and then said, that is a cheese that I have never heard of. For my first time making these, maybe not the best idea. Uh, but if you like mascarpone cheese and have used it before, then by all means you can substitute that in this recipe. We need one tablespoon of sugar. Got my jar of sugar. There we go. A half a teaspoon of grated lemon zest. Okay, I've got my lemon. I've got a really large, heavy, scary looking zester. I have never zested something before. Uh, so this is a new experience for me. Now it calls for half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of lemon zest. But no, if I will have enough for that. But it smells great. Now that, that might not be quite half a teaspoon, maybe it is. Oh, it is, okay, that's good. So I will put in my half a teaspoon of lemon zest. And squeeze out the juice. Oops. Take out the seeds. One tablespoon, two tablespoons. Okay, just enough. Okay, we're gonna whisk these together. Now, ironically, it actually tastes very similar to what our Devonshire cream tastes like. So I may need to get a new Devonshire cream recipe. I might put it to chill in the fridge a little bit. It's holding its shape, but it's still a little bit more liquidy than I'd like. Okay, so getting ready for the other recipe with the chocolate and hazelnuts. Thawing instructions. Thaw at room temperature for three to four hours. I don't have three to four hours. Hmm. Okay, well, lesson that we're learning here read the instructions for all of your ingredients before you start using them. <laughs> well, it looks like what I might have to do is be running out to the store to have a few more sweet options that I can add to the top tier of my afternoon tea, and then maybe I will prepare these ones at a different time. 
Uh, so yeah, we'll try that. Let's finish off our tarts and then we can assemble our afternoon tea with all of the non-homemade sweets that <laughs> I'm going to be adding to it. Our tart shells have cooled. I've got our cream cheese uh, filling and then I've got our topping of some fresh blueberries, a little bit of leftover lemon zest, and some sprigs of mint. So, let's see if we can make this work. So we're just going to put a dollop of the filling into the tart shell, top with a couple of blueberries, Sprinkle over some lemon zest and then top with a little sprig of mint. That looks pretty good. Hopefully it'll taste good. So I'm going to assemble the rest of these. We'll stick them in the fridge for a little bit to chill until company arrives and then I will set up our afternoon tea and we'll see what it tastes like. Well, there we go. I did it, it's an afternoon tea. Uh, it looks pretty good for a first attempt. Uh, and I thought that if I was making a classic afternoon tea that I would pair it with uh, an Earl Grey. Now, I don't know if Earl Grey really defines classic afternoon tea. Um, however, I kind of think that it's a tea that a lot of people would probably have in their pantry. Um, this particular one is called Electric Earl Grey by Tealish, uh, and I'm looking forward to trying it because after doing all of that baking and prepping, uh, I need some electricity. <laughs> you know, when I said at the beginning of the video that you should probably break up prepping for your afternoon tea, do the baking the night before, make the scones in the morning, and then prep the sandwiches before your guests arrive, that is an excellent idea. Don't try to do everything all at once. <laughs> So, cheers. <laughs> that is a very nice Earl Grey. I will definitely enjoy that more. This was a, a gift that someone gave me, uh, so I'm very excited that I'm getting to try it out. Now, I do have my scone and my tart here, uh, so we're gonna try those uh, and we'll see how, how they go. So we'll put a little bit of cream on the scone. Let's try it. So the fact that this was an easy scone recipe that was supposed to be very quick, they're very light and fluffy. They have great flavor. But the Devonshire cream is still a little bit strong on the cream cheese that I added. Um, I'm not sure what an actual Devonshire cream recipe should be. Again, this was a quick and easy one that was attached to the scones. I think maybe I might need to investigate the cream a little bit further and find a good fit. But overall, for a, for a DIY afternoon tea, uh, I think that this fits the brief quite well. Now shall we try the tart? These look absolutely fantastic. I'm so happy with how they turned out, me not having baking skills. So on top of the tarts, I've added blueberries, I've added some lemon zest, and a little bit of mint. Hmm. Now, while I've let these chill, the cheese filling, the cream cheese filling, uh, which is representing cheesecake, has firmed up a little bit. I still don't know that I would call it cheesecake per se, but it does have the idea of cheesecake. The lemon is really strong. Remember we added lemon zest and lemon juice into the mixture. The cheesecake itself does taste very lemony. I might add a little bit less lemon into that uh, if I use this recipe again. But overall, it's really tasty. Um, the original recipe calls for a phyllo crust. I used a pastry shell. I'm actually kind of happy I did. I really like the the pastry shell and the, the cheese filling and the blueberries all together. I think that they are quite nice. Well, 
overall, this is definitely an afternoon tea that I did myself. So I, I've met the brief. <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, it was a bit touch and go there with the scone batter. I, I think that we can all agree on that. Uh, but we got there, we made the scones, they taste delicious. I will absolutely use this recipe again. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with this. I hope that you enjoyed your time here. If you did, why not subscribe? I'm a new YouTuber. I'm just doing this for fun. I'm not going to be an influencer in any way, shape or form, but I am going to be making some more fun themed afternoon teas. I'm going to be exploring different types of tea uh, and we'll, uh, we'll look at different aspects of the tea adventure together. I hope that you'll join me. Thanks so much.